I shall let you have the honor of telling the group about your fight with Zago, I said to Slenderman. I will with pleasure, he said with a smile in his tone. There better be more blood, Jeff said indignantly. Oh, the carnage will increase since it was a war, he assured him. It was a war of zombies, killers, angels, and the gods themselves. So yes, blood was spilt and all sorts of drama was unleashed, I added. Did you do more than talk and snap wrists? Jeff remarked. Yes, and have you ever heard of the phrase defeating a person by words alone is more powerful than felling them with a fist? I inquired. No, not a philosophical crap, he said. Slenderman lifted the rude psychopath from the couch by a tentacle and said sternly, You'll mind your tongue before it is removed, understand? Crystal, he muttered while being dropped upon the cushions. Yeah, it does not have to be bloody all the time, Edge Lord, Ben said. He, he, he sent a, 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 a attention, ho ho, Toby said while laughing. Yeah, I know, right? We have an angel of death telling this great saga, and he has to ruin story time. All the attention goes to her, and he is being salty about it. Ben said while amused. Why did you say elf bitch? Just exclaimed while brandishing his knife from a hoodie pocket. Just stating facts, he replied. Speaking of bitches, if you continue this little tantrum of yours, I shall chain you up outside like the rabid dog that you are, Slenderman threatened. Fine, getting sick of your guy's shit anyway, Jeff muttered. Mr. Faceless stood in the center of the room and began to tell his involvement in the story. The Death Angels left me alone to face Salgo in the public square. His body was malformed and poorly constructed. The skin was absent, leaving only exposed muscles. Patches of decay were splattered in gray splotches about its body. It spoke to me in dual voices. One belonged to a deep voice of a man, as the other was the sultry voice of a woman. So, we meet again after so long, Night of the Woods. Zago sneered. You were only supposed to assist in chaos and nothing more. What happened to our partnership? I said while approaching it. I terminated it after you stole the fame from me, he replied. Could it be that you lacked diligence? I asked. The question seemed to have angered Zago, as it can only reply with a guttural growl. It was predictable of my enemy to rush at me. A lack of a face had an advantage as it could not anticipate my moves from being expressionless. I teleported away from his lane and stood from his previous position. You disappoint me, I said while having my tentacles emerge from my spine. I disappoint you? How about you disappointing me for a change? You let me down by taking all the glory. There are tales about you from around the world. No one knows me since I am some obscure being, he shouted. And just like an angry child, Zalgo began to throw wooden carts, carriages, any large item that was possible in my direction. Its anger allowed it to increase an inch in height with every passing moment, while surfering smoke emitted from its nostrils and horns emerged from the scalp and forehead. Such things were considered to be histrionics by my standards. Sighing while walking towards him as my tentacles swatted the massive projectiles out of my path with ease. Are you done? Or are you going to continue this tantrum of yours? I asked somewhat impatiently. No, I am only beginning, I roared in my face. Very well, if you insist upon brutality, I said, then raised my voice several decibels. Then you shall have it! I grew to his massive height, which towered over the buildings, and we began our battle. We grasped each other's hands in our attempt to tussle one another and held our resistance from falling. It was so blind to rage which allowed my tentacles to slice into the flesh and gush dark red blood from its wounds, pouring down upon the streets in a scarlet mess. To an ordinary human, it would resemble a sanguine downpour from the deep gashes I had made with ease. It can be compared to cutting a rotten and bloated turkey, with the giblets tumbling from the abdomen like pink spaghetti, although the putrid smell was one less thing to overlook. Salgo roared in pain and anguish while releasing my hands and attempted to swing his massive fists from every conceivable direction. A few strikes impacted my ribs and the side of my head. 
Thankfully, I retracted my steps before receiving any more damage. I took a moment to glance upward toward the sky, noticing pale angels fighting the death angels. It seemed ironic that the dark-winged warriors were the true heroes of the story. That beloved maiden of death had rallied other reapers to join in this war. I knew it in my heart that she had resorted to those measures. She had fought in a war before, so this was another battle to her. Looking to my opponent, I said proudly, You have underestimated me again. I have made allies in dark places. Look up. Zago lifted his attention to the sky and grumbled in the pain. Damn you by a thousand curses! You making allies is laughable! How can you make deals with angels? We had a common cause, which is stopping you, I answered simply. I said my piece, now is your turn to tell of what happened in the heavens, Sunran said and patted my head. Thank you, and you told your piece well, I said with a smile. Oh, I remember it as though it were yesterday, he said with a contented sigh. Okay, I am a little satisfied, Jeff grumbled. Slenderman was right in taking the time to go to the underworld to rally the troops. It was a little difficult in getting them to listen to me, especially how Hades and Persephone were in a catatonic state. The sight of their limp forms seated upon their thrones with blank facial expressions was alarming. I knew that Moriel and the treacherous angels had expected this to happen during our confrontation in the medical laboratory. Infiltrating the Heavenly Plaza was a little difficult since it had been a full-on assault. Angels zoomed towards each other, clashing their metallic weapons and violent clanging. Armor glinted faintly of silver beneath the moonlight as feathers of black and white, followed by blood, had descended to the ground. I fought through more guards with Victor to head towards Venus's department at the plaza. Peter separated from the group to steal the divine weaponry, with Wyatt to guard him. The interior of the department consisted of pastel pink walls covered in red roses and rosy velvet furniture, the rose quartz chandelier dangling from the ceiling. You could say that it resembled a Valentine's Day-themed chamber. We saw Penny and other love angels huddled together in horror as the chaos ensued from outside. Oh, you are here! What is going on? We are all scared out of our minds! Penny exclaimed. While I knelt down her level. We need your help, I said quickly. My help? She asked, bewildered. You and your friends, Roline, Victor added. How can we help? We bring people together, not take them apart, Penny said. Can your friendly powder work on zombies? I asked urgently. Well, at least an hour. That will buy us plenty of time, Victor said happily. What did you two have planned? She asked. To pacify the zombie threat, having them be friendly until we take out the main source of what animates them, I explained to her. So we can help? She asked eagerly. We are counting on you to spread the love, Victor encouraged. Like I said before, we need your help, I said with a smile. Then we shall do it, she said cheerfully. To our satisfaction, we saw them run out of the plaza as we followed out the door and into the hallway. Well, well, the harpy returns. We have been expecting you. Moriel's voice spoke from behind us. Hello, Moribel. I've been waiting to see you, too. I said in a mock flirtatious tone. Oh, really now, he taunted. Yes, you could at least tell us how you made the gods cantonic before we fight, I said. You do own explanation, Victor said firmly. Fine, you'll be given that, he said with a sigh. From what he explained, the releasing of Zalgo caused a chain reaction of its magic. Since it had been ruler of nightmares, Zalgo could have the gods be bound in their nightmare world. We had to fight harder than ever to win this war. It is time for a wake-up call, I said in a low tone. I will not let you ruin this chance to impress my beloved Raziel, he shouted. I felt the sensation of metal being pressed into my back, and I asked calmly, Does he love you in return? Shut up! You do not know love, he said defensively. 
I know plenty enough when it is one-sided, countering his outburst. It seems you're at a loss when he showed no signs of affection, Victor said, supporting the claim. He kissed me before we began our attack, he said in a hurried manner. Liar, I said flatly. Pants on fire, Victor said with a chuckle. Oh, you are discriminating on my preference, he said defensively in hopes to shame us. I could care less on who you love. It does not involve me. You just want to have your way with anyone and be controlling by using love, I said bluntly. Megalomania knows no bounds, Victor said. It is unfair to any gender who is your victim, I added firmly. That does it! He bellowed angrily. Victor spun around to push Moriel away from me, give me time to draw my sickles. Danke, Papa, I said with a grin. It dish on, he said in return. So he's your papa now? You prefer him over me? He demanded with venom in his tone. Nine. We simply have a family bond, Victor said, drawing his scythe as well. And like family, we protect each other, I said. Moriel had the grace of a combative ballet dancer and fought us by lightning quick strikes with our blades clashing against one another. His fighting was impressive but lacked the fortitude for close quarters combat. He left his feet vulnerable for the heel of my boot to stomp upon and used the hilt of my sickle to drive into his eye. I had not mentioned that the pommel had a sharp spike which allowed his eye to be punctured. Blood shot from the socket, holding the wound as more blood gushed from between his nimble fingers. Victor laughed wickedly as he swung his scythe to slice Moriel in half. His entrails splattered upon the white tile floor in a sickening wet swoosh by the crimson flood that flooded towards our feet. That will be all, Raziel's voice boomed from behind us. Thank you for disposing of him for me. There is no honor among traitors, so I'm not surprised in the slightest, Victor commented. Neither am I. You probably played him like a fool, I said. It was like playing a harp. He was so full of hope that I would be his spouse, with you as our pet. In truth, I cannot love anyone, Raziel said with a chuckle. We entered into our fighting stances, anticipating him to attack. To our relief, the angel had been sliced into gruesome quarters from behind him. They talk too much, Maya complained, lowering the scythe. I got the weapons and had to drag them all in a wagon, Peter said while panning. Thanks, partners, I said, tipping my miniature top hat to them. Our pleasure, little lady, he said. Ready to rain down on Zago's parade? I asked. Oh, let's give them a firestorm, he said excitedly. Our operation is nearly completed, I said wickedly. It's your turn again, Mr. Faithless, I said. Why, thank you, Angle, Slenderman said and bowed his head. This is actually my favorite part so far, Jeff said anxiously. I like your style, someone who fights with a brain in their head, Ben commented. I'm happy to see it being appreciated, <laughs> I said. I explained to you the events that ended the war, Slenderman announced. I held my own against Zalgo for a good 15 minutes. To my surprise, flaming balls fell from the sky and began to do a curious action. When a ball lands upon a zombie, it would then explode them into green chunks, spraying rotten viscera haphazardly and leaving loud thunder. I had to cover my ear holes to deafen the roaring explosions. My army! It is those angels doing! Zalgo roared in anger. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? I asked, delving my hand into its chest to squeeze its black heart. I watched with joy to see a helpless expression on the monster's face as I pulled out the heart and opened my mouth to consume it. Before I could strike again, the fireballs rained down upon Zalgo to explore the rest of the body. Oh, the sight of the hideous form being blown apart and spraying its blood like a cracking of loaded watermelon. A mess of red and pink flesh littered the buildings in a crimson shower which flooded the streets. It's over. I said to myself, the war is over. That's it? What happened after the war? Jane asked. Oh, that'll be covered in the next part. You'll laugh at the gods' reactions, I assured her. <laughs>